I'm Vanessa Tyler and welcome to What's Eating Harlem where we cover the most exciting community in the world. There is so much going on here in Harlem. Let's get started. You come here often? The answer is yes. If it's Harlem Food Bar, where customers from the neighborhood feel right at home. I like it when the light is lit like the breeze in a dusty room. Your presence moves right through it. You're all I can see. One look and you know they must live in Harlem. It's a certain style. Check out who you know, our Selena Hill is spotlighting like in Harlem style. But did you think I would say at this moment? She's been called everyone from a young Natalie Cole to Whitney Houston, but she's fantastic on her own. The incredible Nicole Henry. All of that on this edition of What's Eating Harlem. Closed captioning supported by Chocolate Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone meets at the bar at Chocolate. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolate Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem, funded in part by Cove Lounge, situated in the heart of Harlem. It embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Harlem is welcoming a new season, white truffle season. Urbani truffles, just 24 hours ago in Italy underground and put on a plane exported worldwide, just landing in New York, now heading uptown. White truffle season is here and our Bonnie Truffles is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. Jammin' in Harlem's oldest live dive bar. Harris Blues, live music every night. Owner Mr. Alabama Sam Harglass will make sure you have a ball. Eat, drink, join the party. Harlem's own Paris Blues, 121st and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard 7th Avenue, Harlem, is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. The Groove at Ponte Bistro. Mixing live music with upscale French African cuisine. At the corner of 139th and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard and at their other location in Gramercy Park at 218 3rd Avenue. The food, the fun, it's a party at Ponte. Ponte Bistro, 139th and 7th Avenue, Uptown. Delighted to support What's Eating Harlem. Oh, so make us a beautiful burger, medium, uh, golden fries, beautiful, and also one order of chicken wings. Okay, thank you. Ernesto Gonzalez hurries to put in the order so he can do his thing up front. His thing? Making his customers feel right at home. I remember back in the 80s when I was young and uh, you know I used to go to places they knew your name, they knew what you like to eat, you knew a lot of the people sitting in the dining room, you knew your bartender and you also knew your chef. So I wanted to kind of recreate that. You know, I had a bar down in the meatpacking where everybody knew us for years. And I thought, hey, this is just my style. I don't want to change that about me. And uh, it has become a, a place for locals, by locals, for locals. And I'm really proud of that. That really, really excites me. The place is the Harlem Food Bar, located at 113th and Frederick Douglass Boulevard. It is cozy. There are nights this place is packed. Ernesto enjoys himself as much as his guests. Oh, I'm here seven days a week. I am having a glass of wine with my customers often. <laughs> his customers? A bit of everyone, including most from the neighborhood. Once you get here and you meet him, you can't help but fall in love with this place. You know, I live just around the corner and I'm always here. Uh, this is my home away from home. You know, so the food, yeah, the food is good, but it's 
that's secondary to how you feel when you're here. There's nothing better to a restaurateur than seeing the same people over and over again. Wait, Ernesto is not just a grand host, he is a bona fide chef. My background is interesting. I, um, I started in investment banking. I was a global events uh, person. And after that, um, I decided I wanted to go to a culinary school. I always wanted to do it. I've been cooking since I was 14. And it was my one and only chance. I was 27 years old, which is a little late start for a chef. But I had already traveled the world. But there is no place like home. He was born in Harlem, grew up in Puerto Rico, and now back adding to Harlem's hot restaurant scene. I had different options. It was either Brooklyn, Chelsea, or Harlem. Now that he's here, he wants to take his world experience uptown. I was working with some of the most elite chefs in New York City. You know, the Jacques Pepin, the Alan Ducasses of the world. I did a lot, of, a lot of volunteer work for them. Harlem Food Bar prides itself on its eclectic food. It's American fare, it's got a little southern influence, a little Latin influence, a little French influence because I went to a French culinary school. Some of the dishes like uh, the fried chicken, we took me about three months before I had the nerve to put it on the menu. I wanted to make sure I had a good fried chicken. I'm in Harlem, I gotta give you good fried chicken. First of all, it's organic chicken from Pat La Frida. And then we do a buttermilk with seasoning and then we do a double batter before we fry it. So it's, it's a labor intensive but I that's just the kind of person I am. The food is delicious and follows a financial philosophy. We want to make sure that anyone who lived in Harlem was able to come here and have a burger, a glass of wine for a decent price. We sell it at only $12, which is unbelievable. It's almost close to a McDonald's price, you know, but you're getting a fresh, hand ground, uh, grounded uh, meat that is delivered every morning fresh. It's never frozen. Burgers customers obsess over. We came here today and I said I'm going to try something different and I sort of panicked and just got a burger again because I didn't want to be disappointed. Our turkey burger is actually the best seller. So we take a ground, uh, fresh ground turkey and we add a little uh, jalapeno, some chives, we, uh, some saute mushrooms. They're very moist. They're a good uh, eight ounce bur uh, burger. And people, I mean, I've had compliments like this is ultimately the best turkey burger I've ever had in my life. We make a French onion soup that uh, uh, Jacques Pepin taught me how to make. And I taught my staff. And we are very religious about the way it goes. You know, the onions have to be caramelized properly. Then it goes in the oven. Then you add the butter, the steps. No one alternates that because that's one of our top sellers as well. Ernesto Gonzalez, back home in Harlem at the food bar, giving the people what they want. It was meant to be. I don't know what pulled me here, but I, I remember telling one of my customers, at one point, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Eating Harlem wants to get you involved. Do you have a story idea? Tell us. Go to our website, whatseatingharlem.com. There, you can sign up and become a member and get discounts to some of the places we feature. Remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.
Selena Hill, and this is Harlem Style. What is big, sexy music? It's the new hip hot jazz scene that is taking New York City by storm. And at the front lines is an eclectic and vivacious musician named Emma Zakravicius. Better known as M, but best known as Big Sexy herself. Coming all the way from Australia, Emma has made her stake playing all around Harlem with her punk soul cabaret band, The Big Sexy Music. But in addition to her unconventional and punchy sound, she also captivates audiences with her style. Tonight, we're here at Sylvana, and I'll speak to her about Harlem style. The sound really developed in Harlem where I met my band at the New Amsterdam Music Association. Um, I was doing a jam there one night after I had sort of become estranged from my recent collaborator and one of my bandmates, Little Sexy, aka Zandrina. She invited me to come, we did a jam together um, and her husband who had been working with a guitar player came to the show and with his student who's a bass player and they got on stage and they started playing this song and I looked around and I said, what song is that? And they said, oh that's your song, Fallen Angel. And I was like, what? And they had learned all my songs, unbeknown to me, I'd never met them before. And so, yeah, that's how my band came about. Can you talk more about how that name, Big Sexy Music, came about and also how you have, you've taken on that persona as Big Sexy? I was working in a cafe for a long time and one of my co-workers used to call me Big Sexy and he, it was like his joke to me. He'd you know, be like, I'm a big sexy. And then all the chefs started calling me big sexy, which I hated actually. And then all the customers started calling me big sexy. And then, <laughs> and then one of my friends who's a singer, she, she said, um, you should call your band that, Big Sexy Music, that's a great name. So that's how it kind of started. It's the first thing that anyone will say to me when I get off stage, oh, you got great energy. Oh, I love the energy. There's so much energy, you have so much energy. And I, I feel like really, the thing I love about the band and you know, live music is never perfect. It's it's a it's a dynamic that comes together and you have to merge. Sometimes it's you know, there's always things going on, but we rock out. I gotta get to you now. I'm burning down. I'm burning down the streets, the streets. And that's why I love Harlem, because Harlem really gets that spirit. I mean, Harlem is that spirit, and I feel like um, it's always embraced that. For, for us, they're a little bit, I feel like audiences in Harlem are uh, more participatory, or they're, you know, they're not afraid to like, get into it. How would you describe your style? Comfortable. I mean, I like to look fashionably comfortable in any situation, and it might change. So, you know, for my rock and roll band, I tend to maybe wear more leopard print or, or black, black, or you know, more punk when I'm out and about as big sexy, you know, it's more, you know, a little bit more classy, but sometimes a little bit sexy. UCA from Venice Beach when I was there performing with my other band Crazy Mary. This jacket I got from my very good friend who also loves the styling. I don't know where she got it from, but she always buys me jackets.
all my accessories, jewelry, bracelet, and necklace are by Z Charles Creations. Zandrina Charles, who is also in my band, AKA Little Sexy. Skirt's from Joyce Leslie, but I got it years ago and it's my favorite skirt. Like it's, it's ready to retire, but no, it's, it's really my favorite skirt. <laughs> my stockings are from 125th Street, Dwayne Street, uh, Dwayne Reed. I got the shoes from 125th Street and Fred Drake Douglas on the on the corner. I'm not sure what it was, but we went in there one day and we sang to them. We sang to them. We sang to them. The history of musical um, exchange in Harlem is so rich. It's part of the culture, you know. Like they're in the music, and um, I mean, it's not to say like I play a lot downtown too and they get into it too, but it's just like a different vibe. And I don't think one is better than the other, but I love Harlem. I mean, really Harlem is where we shine. So if it's unique and it's fabulous, then it must be Harlem style. I'm Selena Hill. You know when you got it, you've got it. And Nicole Henry has got it all, from her supermodel looks to her super incredible voice. What's Eating Harlem is sitting in on her rehearsal before her Harlem show at Jenny's Supper Club below the Red Rooster on 125th and Malcolm X. Hear that? That is what got Nicole Henry impressive reviews. Some say she is a young Natalie Cole. Or get this, one reviewer writing, if Whitney Houston and Sarah Vaughn had a vocal love child, it would be Nicole Henry. It's definitely a good feeling to, A, just to be reviewed by uh, the media at any time, and then of course to get high praise from any, anyone, whether it be an audience member or of course the media. It's, uh, it's definitely a blessing and it's encouraging. She is encouraged by all the praise and awards. Soul Train honored her in 2013 for Best Traditional Jazz Performance. When I sing, I always want to tell a story. I, and, and this morning I read a story about Tony Bennett and he was saying, I never sing a song the same way. And it's kind of true because you, you're storytelling. Did you think I would do at this moment when you're standing before me with tears in your eyes trying to tell me that you Another. You just don't love me no more. Every time you approach the story, you are telling somebody, the listener, a story. And you really want to be there in the moment, and you can't ever make that same moment happen again. You know, that's just reality. So, so to kind of stay true, I just try to think about what, I'm, what, what feeling I want people to feel, what the lyrics are saying, and just tell the story. I just want to I grew up um, listening to soul music of the 70s that my parents would play for me, from Aretha Franklin to Patti LaBelle to Sister Sledge. 
Um, and so that's what I grew up on. And then any, anybody from my generation who started singing at a young age or in high school, I was singing Whitney Houston growing up. She grew up in Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Her mom played classical piano. Her aunt Debbie Henry was background singer to Patti LaBelle. And being so close to Philly, she was heavily influenced by the Philadelphia sound, singing all genres of music. Then it clicked. And then in 2002, I fell in love with jazz. I fell in love with the freedom of jazz, the melody of jazz, the storytelling opportunity. Welcome to Jenny's. Welcome to Harlem. This night, jazz is what the people came to hear. The two talents not doing pop and direct hip hop and direct R, you know, R&B because that's what's on the radio. Um, but thank God for places like Jenny's and so many live music venues that I love seeing popping up all over New York and Harlem. Nicole Henry has three of her albums top 10 on Billboard and on top music lists in Japan. Her following, not only in Harlem, but around the world. It was amazing going to Japan. I think I've been there now 13 or 14 times. And it made me just realize that all things are possible. The way that I see the world, I always believed that you can do anything and be anywhere. So it wasn't so much that I was surprised that I was received by Japan, but it was kind of like, all oh, right. I can do this anywhere. I love you. things that come to you in life as a, as a, a shout of encouragement and a, and a reminder that everything, everything is all right. You know, someone's taking care of us and you can do what you want to do if you focus and work hard. You have to know what you want because some things will come just by luck, but then other times you just have to focus on it and then go after something and, and things come around. But I sing cause I know how it feels to be free. That's all the time we have for now. Join us next time on What's Eating Harlem. I'm Vanessa Tyler. See you uptown. Closed captioning supported by Chocolate Restaurant Lounge, 2223 Frederick Douglass Boulevard, Harlem. Everyone eats at the bar at Chocolate. Late night weekend dining too. Chocolate Restaurant Lounge. What's Eating Harlem funded in part by Cove Lounge, situated in the heart of Harlem, it embodies the spirit and vitality of its community, delivering a unique blend of cool sophistication and urban edge. Harlem is welcoming a new season, white truffle season. Urbani truffles, just 24 hours ago in Italy underground and put on a plane exported worldwide, just landing in New York, now heading uptown. White truffle season is here and our Bonnie Truffles is a proud supporter of What's Eating Harlem. Jammin' in Harlem's oldest live dive bar. Harris Blues, live music every night. Owner Mr. Alabama Sam Harglass will make sure you have a ball. Eat, drink, join the party. Harlem's own Paris Blues, 121st and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard 7th Avenue, Harlem, is a proud supporter of what's eating Harlem. 
to become a member of What's Eating Harlem, go to www.whatseatingharlem.com and sign up for special events like wine tastings and food tastings. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. If you have any ideas for stories about Harlem, send them to info at whatseatingharlem.com.